What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the HQ. What's good if you're joining us on the podcast, on the YouTubes, whatever it may be. Uh, I'd just like to let you know if, if you're enjoying the show, if you're enjoying the content I'm putting out, I would greatly appreciate if you drop the thumbs up button on the video. If you're on YouTube, if you're on the podcast, a rating and review would be gorgeous. I would very much appreciate that since it's Friday. One, I'm in Cancun, baby. I'm in Mexico right now, but y'all are seeing me in the HQ. It's Mock Draft Fridays. Today, I'm going to do something that we haven't done yet on the channel. That's a more of a, a deeper league mock draft because I know not all y'all are in eight teams and 10 team leagues. Some of y'all happen to be blessed with more friends than the rest of us. So you got a bigger league going on, 16, 14, 18 teams. We're going to do a 16 team league today. And since they don't really have 16 team leagues on... ESPN and Yahoo and, and Fantasy Football Calculator. They might, honestly. I'm just, I might just be lying. I keep it 99 because I'd be lying a lot of the time. So we're just going to do it on the Fantasy Pros Draft Wizard, which is basically an automated software. Any of you guys can use this. It's completely free to practice mock drafts. And what you do is you set up all your all your settings, right? And we're going to do 2018. We'll do half PPR. I like to keep my mock drafts at half PPR because a lot of people play in standard still. I don't know for whatever reason, but a lot of people play in full PPR. So half PPR meets them halfway and you can, it's similar analysis to both different types of leagues, but you guys can kind of skew it towards whatever your league is playing in. So I keep it half PPR. We're going to do a snake. I get a lot of questions about auction guys as well. Um, I don't, I don't personally do auction drafts. None of the leagues that I'm in, it's not that I don't like them. It's not that I don't want to do them, but none of the redraft leagues that I'm in do auction drafts. Uh, so I'm probably not the best person to give you auction draft advice, and I'm not just going to spew out bullshit because I think that's what you guys want to hear. I only give you the big facts about the shit that I know. So we're going to keep it at snake. We're going to do 16 teams. I'm going to randomize my draft spot. Okay, so I'm picking 13th out of 16. The roster construction will be quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end. Uh, we'll go two flexes. We'll do a defense and a kicker. Because I kind of want to talk about those points, actually. And then, like, when you're drafting against uh, the Fantasy Pros Mock Draft Wizard, basically you can set it up so that since you're, you're only drafting against computers, you're not drafting against real people, but you can choose how those computers draft or what they, um, you know, like what they're thinking, I guess, you, if you want to say. And you could just do it against the expert rankings on Fantasy Pros because Fantasy Pros is basically the platform where all experts, right, throughout the year actually put their ranking. So at the end of the year, Fantasy Pros has this thing where they, they calculate the best experts based on where they rank players throughout the year, in season, and during the draft. And this is where, like, this is basically the home base for all of those rankings. So you could do it against the experts, but you can also put the uh, ADPs from these different websites, Fantasy Football Calculator, Yahoo, whatever. Um, I'm honestly, I'm just going to click all of them and, um, and give it a good mix so that we're getting a wide variety of ADPs and rankings and, and whatever. Uh, so that we're drafting against, I guess, realistic kind of circumstances, whether it be an expert league or a home league. Um, and that's going to be it. We're just going to start the draft off right now. And uh, we'll talk about the different strategies of 16-team league as opposed to a you know 10- or 12-team league. So, um, oh, it's unfortunate that neither Fournette or Melvin Gordon fell to me. Now, when I'm thinking of 16-team league... This means a few things. One, uh, the waiver wire is going to be much, much, much smaller throughout the season. I'm just going to hide the drafted players. It's going to be much, uh, much smaller throughout the season, right? So what that means is it's a lot harder to stream positions, right? So there are positions like quarterback, tight end, defense, kicker, whatever that you might stream. So you have to keep that in mind. The other thing you have to keep in mind is... The running back position this year, and, and most years, I guess, but there's a, is a monster fall off, right? When it goes from the top tier of running backs into like the second, third tier, the question marks rise up very quickly. Whereas this year I see wide receiver depth being a very, very, very key part of draft strategies. Whereas you can kind of skip out on wide receiver or yeah, wide receivers early, go with heavy running backs because they fall off so quickly and then go with your wide receivers kind of in the mid rounds of the draft. So we'll kind of talk on that as it goes through. Now, this is a really, really, really tricky draft spot because as I'm just saying, I, I want to go with running backs early and I want to get a, a heavy amount of running backs early in my draft. 
and go with wide receivers later on. The thing is, you have to remember that when you're in a 16-team league, right? I'm drafting 13th, so I'll have the 13th pick. Then there are, I think, six picks in between my next pick. And then I'm obviously out for a long time, and I don't get a, a, a lot of draft picks. So you have to be very conscious and very cautious when you're making your picks in these bigger leagues. Um, so obviously, you see this whole second tier of wide receivers chilling. Julio, MT, Keenan Allen, and you would love to have one of those players. However, I'm talking about I want to have a top-tier running back as well because I, I would highly suggest, even if you do value-based drafting, I would highly suggest not going with wide receiver, wide receiver to start off because you're going to put yourself at a cinch later in the draft if you don't go with running backs early on because the depth falls off so quickly and you're going to be start like you're going to be banking on one of these guys down here whether it's a rookie that you're kind of unsure about or whether it's like a Tevin Coleman as your RB1 or 2 um it, it's really tough to get through the year because the running back position is so valuable the top tier guys perform um the mid tier guys very very heavily especially compared to top wide receivers to mid tier wide receivers so the point I'm trying to get across is you want a top running back no, I'm going to do something that a lot of people will disagree with here. While Julio and Michael Thomas and Keenan Allen are on the board, um, I'm actually going to skip out on them, and I'm going to go with Devonta Freeman. Now, I, I'm not doing this specifically because I love running backs, and I only want to get a running back, but I personally have Devonta Freeman, I believe, ranked like 12th overall in my rankings. Um, and I'm actually going to show you this. Let's see. My rankings are obviously in my draft guide. If you haven't checked it out, I have all my rankings and a bunch of other um, awesome stuff in the draft guide, which you can get on BigDogFantasy.com. I just want to double check my rankings here. Um, okay, so I have Devonta Freeman 14th overall, and I do have these wide receivers ranked ahead of him, but I'm a lot higher on Freeman than a lot of people, as you can see. So I would be perfectly fine with him as my RB1. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, eight so he's my rb9 so that considers uh, an rb1 for me and that's going to be a lot higher than a lot of people but that means i'm fine with devonta freeman there the other thing to consider is if i were to go with a wide receiver do you think devonta freeman would fall to me at pick uh at the two whatever it is the two three or the two four spot um i would probably say no now i i don't think devonta freeman would fall to me there but what I do like is that if I do go Devonta Freeman, there's a good chance that either A.J. Green or Devonta Adams falls to me on the next spot, which I think they're in a very close tier to these other guys. So I'd be fine going Devonta Freeman here as my RB1. Okay, so we had a couple wide receivers, a couple running backs go off the board. Um, what are we working with here? Yeah, so Devonta Adams would probably be my clear pick here. Uh, T.Y. Hilton is not far behind him. And we have the... Tight ends of Gronk, which I don't hate, but he's not. Tight end is not exactly a position I'm looking to secure in a 16-team league. You want those skill position players because those are going to be hard to seal up in uh, in a big league like this. And my strategy when it comes to the tight ends and quarterbacks is again, I'm I'm going to end up waiting on on these positions most likely. But what I'm going to do is go early with the skill positions. Running back, wide receiver, super heavy. Probably the first seven or eight rounds are only going to be those guys, and then go with um, like two, possibly even three quarterbacks, and two tight ends who are like in the high upside kind of range. So you want to go heavy on the skill positions, but also make sure you have depth at the other positions to kind of move around and play based on matchups. So I'm going to go to Monta Adams here. Now what, what I could have done is go with, I'll go back and look at this real quick. What I could have done is go with a Julio or a Michael Thomas and Keenan Allen and hope to one of these running backs fell to me. Um, I would have been looking at Dalvin Cook or Jarek McKinnon. Neither of them would have fell to me. Um, and I would have had my choice of Jordan Howard or C-Mac. Um, and if you've watched my videos, you know, Jordan Howard for me in a, in a PPR type league, a half PPR type league is not that valuable to me or not as anywhere near as valuable as Devonta Freeman. And Christian McCaffrey, I did my, one of my In the Muck Monday videos where it was McCaffrey versus Devonta Adams. Uh, McCaffrey versus Freeman, and I have Freeman ranked way ahead of him. So if I went with like a Julio, then I would have had to grab one of these other running backs in a Jordan Howard or McCaffrey, and I would not have been that happy with them as my RB1. And I'm I'm perfectly fine with Devonta Freeman and Devonta Adams there because, you know, Devonta Adams obviously has the league-leading touchdown upside being the wide receiver one there in Green Bay. Um, then we saw a bunch of, let's see, so we have the top three tight ends went off the board. We have Gronk, 
Kelsey Ertz. It's so crazy to me that Ertz is going so close to Travis Kelsey there. And then the rest were uh, wide receiver running backs. So a quarterback go 213. Guys, do not go with a quarterback that early whatsoever. Please do yourself a favor because these are these early rounds are so crucial to get um, to get skill players. Let's see who's on the board now. So see how quickly running back drops off now. Imagine I went wide receiver, wide receiver there, and I'd be looking at Alex Collins or Lamar Miller as my RB1. Now, I wouldn't be necessarily pissed about that. Like, I like those players, but, um, you know, they're risky for an RB1. The fact that I got Freeman first is pretty nice, though, because now one of these guys could be my RB2. Um, and I actually like both of these guys pretty uh, a lot. I like Alex Collins a lot. I like Lamar Miller a lot. Now, Alex Collins, for me, is the clear RB1 in Baltimore. And I told in my uh, mid, mid-round mid league winning upside video, I, I posted Alex Collins as one of the three guys who I see could finishes top five in the position. Um, I'm not really sold on Kenneth Dixon whatsoever. He missed practice time already with uh, a hamstring injury. I believe he's back at practice. But the thing is, guys, when you have to make an impression on the team and you have to really come out and ball out in training camp to earn a role, any missed time is a huge red flag. So Kenneth Dixon missing time to compete with Alex Collins is huge. Um, and I think Alex Collins will benefit from getting Marshall Yanda back. Um, this, this offense should be a little better. Uh, you saw that they wanted to lean on the run down the stretch last year. They gave Alex Collins like 19 touches a game over the last eight, 10 weeks. If Lamar Jackson does get in, which, you know, it's hard to say whether or not he will. I rewatched the Hall of Fame game, guys, and, and Lamar Jackson was not actually that bad. I mean, do you remember Deshaun Watson's first, like the first game he played in? He looked awful and everyone wanted to write him off immediately. Uh, but give Lamar Jackson some time. I don't think he looked as bad as most people thought he looked. So if he goes in, obviously that whole... Um, script of the running back having bigger holes and doing a lot better uh, in terms of efficiency is, is a very real thing when you look at it like Alfred Morris with RG3 and all these quarterbacks that are mobile and, and the running backs always perform a lot better with mobile quarterbacks. It makes sense just from a logistical standpoint because a linebacker has to keep an eye on the quarterback. So every time they line up in like a run pass option or it's the it, it's the run the quarterback, you know, from the shotgun or something, one of the linebackers has to leave the running back hole and actually go watch the quarterback. So that's pretty much them play, playing 10 on 11, if you think about it. So I'm going to go with Alex Collins here as my RB2. One of the things you want to do also, I should have mentioned in the first two rounds, is kind of minimize risk. Now, you can't really win your league in the first two rounds, right? It's hard to get everyone's so good that you're going to pick in the first two rounds, but you can minimize risk, which is actually why I might even say to stay away from guys like Leonard Fournette, um, or guys that are, you know, are injury concerned because in a 16 team league, you're only going to get two or three studs on your team. And if you have studs that are in your lineup throughout the year, they're going to keep you afloat. But if one of your first two or three picks gets hurt or busts pretty heavily, uh, then you're going to be looking at a season, uh, where it's really hard to make up that gap because other people have their first, second round picks performing and you don't have one of them, whether it's injury or whether it's bust, uh, that that's such a big points per game difference. So I would almost say minimize risk in the first couple rounds. I know you guys are going to be like, oh, Devonta Freeman's risky. But he was one of the most durable. Prior to last year, he was super, super durable. Um, Vegas, the Vegas odds, which I will be putting out a video next Wednesday, uh, looking at Vegas odds in terms of player props, um, most passing yards, rushing yards, receiving yards, and then individual players and their their total yardage and touchdowns. Vegas has Devonta Freeman's touchdown over under is 10 and a half, as well as his total yards at like 1200. And that's what I pegged him as I said, that's like pretty much projection wise for what you could see him finishing with. So I don't think he's as risky as most people do. They put him as an injury risk because of recency bias. But the previous two years, he didn't deal with any injuries. I understand he's a little smaller, but uh, Freeman set up in a great offense behind a great offensive line um, with plenty of weapons. And I think he's going to bounce back in a big way. So I don't look at him as risky. Devonta Adams shouldn't be looked at as risky whatsoever either with Aaron Rodgers there. Collins is a little bit risky, but again, it's kind of hard to play completely safe in a 16-team uh, league when you're all the way at the back half of the 13th round or the third round. So like Alex Collins there. And then I'd be looking at the fourth round where we saw another quarterback go on. I'm not even looking at quarterback right now. I would probably be looking at... Hmm... Give me a second to just look at the names because I've just been talking to you guys for a while. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so there's a few wide receivers and a few running backs I'm looking at. Now I'm looking at I'm looking at rookie running backs right now. I like Deion Lewis, but I'm not sure I really want him uh, that badly outside of a full PPR league. I kind of I'm warming up to Royce Freeman for sure. Uh, I know I put Devonte Booker as my on my Stay Woke Saturday on my Instagram. 
But I, I still believe in Devonta Booker being a value at where he's being picked. But I like both guys at where they're being picked. Royce Freeman is like going off at most um, in most drafts at like pick 55 or 60, which I think is a great value considering how many touches is open in that backfield. With CJ and Jamal Charles gone, there's like 365 opportunities up there for grabs. Royce Freeman should be the pounder, the goal line back. Um, he won't be that involved in the passing game, guys. I think Devontae Booker is really going to be the guy that takes that um, that takes that role. Uh, but I like Royce Freeman's volume floor is really, really high. So even if you take a guy like Alex Collins, who is a little bit risky, I would say Royce Freeman is not that risky because his volume floor is going to be super high. Um, and, you know, Golden Tate's another guy who's kind of safe, but, you know, I did the Golden Tate versus Marvin Jones in the muck, and um, and I like Marvin Jones more. However, again, there's a lot more depth at wide receiver. Like, I can wait two or three rounds and still get guys like um, Emmanuel Sanders or Randall Cobb or Cooper Cup, even Marquise Goodwin, who I'm definitely gaining on, Nelson Aguilar, all these things. Let me run. I'll be right back. And let me grab a charger. 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 Yeah. Yeah, trick. Yeah. Hang. Um, so that's a reason why I'd probably be looking to go with even another running back. So I, I'm pretty I'm pretty cool going with at least three running backs in the first four rounds. If you, if you have good value at four running backs, I'd be perfectly fine with that as well. So I'm actually going to go with Royce Freeman here. Roycey, Roycey. And he will occupy one of my flex spots. Now, there's going to be a lot of picks in between now and my next pick. Oh, and we just saw... Um, shout out Devin Page. Devin Page, you my man. I just got a notification. You purchased my draft guide. I appreciate the support as always, guys. If you're enjoying the video thus far, um, would you please go do me a favor and drop a thumbs up button and or subscribe to the channel if you are new. I forgot what I was just going to say. Give me a second. Uh, I think it was some kind of new news that happened. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, because I was just talking about... Who was I talking about? Uh, I was looking at Calvin Benjamin. So Corey Coleman just got traded to the Bills. This is kind of an interesting move. Uh, we heard the rumors pretty much all offseason about how Corey Coleman was, uh, you know, the discussion of, of trade reports and how they were looking to move him. They finally moved him to the Bills for a 2027th round pick. Um, so they used a first round pick on him two years ago, and now they moved him for a seventh round pick, which is not for another two years which is even less valuable in next year's seventh round pick. So it's almost it's almost like nothing. So it tells you how bad they wanted to get Corey Coleman out of the way. What this means for Corey Coleman, uh, it's definitely not good. He is someone that I'm not necessarily looking to draft. It hurts Kelvin Benjamin's upside, or not upside, but his floor, because prior to the trade, Kelvin Benjamin was a guy who was kind of penciled in for like 110 targets, 120 targets just by default. He still will be the red zone option, but it's an offense that probably won't be in the red zone that often. Um... Now you have Corey Coleman moving out of there. So that leaves the way for Antonio Callaway. Let me see if they wrote anything up on, on Callaway. Ooh, I like this right here. I love this. Deshaun, Watson, Deshaun Jackson has increasingly been working from the slot. And the Bucks plan to start Chris Godwin. Let's go. I, dude, I love Chris Godwin. I've, I've been trying to hype him all, all summer. He's, I own him on all of my dynasty leagues, thank God. Um, he's going to be a beast when they start him. And it's going to be funny when he's the wide receiver one there over Mike Evans soon. Gerald Everett, shoulder injury. Hang. What was I looking for? Oh, Callaway. So that's the other guy. Um, Callaway. Hope I spelled that right. Nope. How the fuck do you spell Callaway? Uh, all. All A's, huh? Let's see what you've done did there. Mr. and Mrs. Callaway. Um, so his stuff is looking good from camp. Tore up defensive backs in one-on-one -on -one drills. I mean, that's like, that's, who cares? Um, so this is probably the reason why they got rid of Corey Coleman, because they used their fourth-round pick on this kid, Antonio Callaway, out of Florida. Uh, Callaway did not play NCAA football last year for off-field, um, I don't know, some, some, some issues made him sit out. But he was... Um, an absolute stud, and most people penciled him in as a first-round talent. Had all the not, all the uh, off-field issues not taken place, so that will give him a chance to um, that will give him a chance to 
partake in this offense and be almost an every down player, not an every down player. Cause it's still going to be Josh Gordon, Jarvis Landry, uh, but Callaway will get in on a, a good amount of snaps. Now, if Corey Coleman was still there, it would have been hard to take either of them. Now Callaway is definitely a good late round shot. What this also says, this, this also says about Josh Gordon, the fact that they were willing to give up Corey Coleman with, with the question mark surrounding Josh Gordon means that they're probably confident Josh Gordon will be back soon and will be on the field. Because if they were scared about Josh Gordon missing like half the season or whatever due to whatever these off-field issues are, then they wouldn't have given up Corey Coleman, who was a piece of their wide receiver depth, right? He probably would have been on the outside if Gordon wasn't there. So it tells you that they're probably not concerned about Josh Gordon. So that means in my head that I probably shouldn't be that concerned about Josh Gordon, and neither should you guys. I hope that makes sense to y'all. So we have... Um, Okay, we saw a lot of guys go off the board here. Let me see. We had two more quarterbacks. So we have Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, Drew Brees go off the board. We have hmm, Juju went off, Colton Tate, Jarvis, Marvin Jones, Corey Davis, Hogan, Emmanuel Sanders, Sammy Watkins, all guys I probably would have looked at. None of the running, wow, there's only three running backs going off in that span. Uh, none of the guys that I really would have wanted. So now when I'm looking at the board, I see, I definitely wouldn't be, I mean, actually Kyle Rudolph here is not the worst pick at pick 76, although I still would probably be looking at running backs, to be honest with you, just because I see, I see more value at running back. I would go with Randall Cobb here. However, guys, I'm a little nervous because we just heard reports that uh, he had the surgery on his ankle, like two, I don't know, a month and a half, two months ago. Um, was in a walking boot, got out of the walking boot. They said he was healthy, and then he tweaked his ankle again in practice last week if you're watching this on friday it was last week or earlier this week and now uh it was the same ankle that he had surgery on so this kind of scares me a little bit away from randall cobb now i don't think we have any updated reports on cobb yet let's see reveals he underwent minor ankle surgery i already knew that i don't have any new reports on that i thought he tweaked he definitely did i saw it on twitter he, t he retweaked his ankle again so I'm probably going to chill with Cobb right now as my fifth round pick. And what I do see is really good value for a, um, I'm looking at Marshawn Lynch, Rex Burkhead, Carrion Johnson, and Jamal Williams. Now, in spite of the, um, Sonny Michelle news, I would be absolutely ecstatic to have Rex Burkhead here. Now, I, you know, you guys know I've touted Sonny Michelle throughout this summer a ton. But guys, you got to be realistic. You fall in love with ADPs. You don't fall in love with players. Although I did fall in love. I, I really like Sonny Michelle as a player. However, this knee scope, whatever they're saying, is crucial. Because again, it goes back to the point I made with Kenneth Dixon. Whereas it's not necessarily the fact that Michelle is supposedly going to be back in 10 days or whatever. Um, even though Dr. Jesse Morse tweeted out yesterday, he thinks it's going to be more, to, more than like three to four weeks. Training camp is so crucial for rookies. Because you're getting the playbook down, you're learning the offense, you're gaining chemistry and timing with the quarterback, the offensive line, the other players, your teammates, the coaches get more comfortable with you and pass blocking. These are these are really crucial reps. So any time missed for running back is huge, and it's going to move them down the depth chart. And uh, Rex Burkhead was already a guy I like. I, I've been saying I'd be happy getting both of these guys. So I'm actually going to go with Rex Burkhead here um, because I think he's a super safe floor and ceiling play. To be honest with you, so he will be my fourth running back and my second flex spot. So uh, there you go, uh, Cobb, Parker, Crowder, Cup. Um, see what we got twerking out here. Damn, I still kind of like running backs here. I might even go with a fifth running back. I think there's really good value at. I think I think the upside for Carryon Johnson. Obviously, if you if you saw my um, my mid my mid round upside picks, I like Carryon Johnson. There are reports that he's working. Uh, on the goal line and the reports that he's working more in pass catching in practice than people expected him to be. So that's great news because obviously the downside was Theo Riddick and LeGarrette Blunt being there. Um, I also like Jamal Williams a lot. I've talked about that. The fact that Aaron Jones is out for two weeks um, and he's been out of practice with an injury. So it's like he's missing a lot of reps. If Jamal Williams gets that that starting role for the first two weeks and doesn't really mess it up right with Aaron Rodgers there, it's probably hard to mess that up. Uh, Jamal Williams could secure that spot. And we saw last year the Packers wanted to use uh, a main running back, right? They had one running back touch the ball 15 or more times in 10 games. They had a running back touch the ball 20 or more times in 12 games. I'm talking about a single running back. So it was pretty obvious that they wanted to use one, but none of them could stay healthy. So 
I'd be looking at carry on Johnson, Jamal Williams, just because I don't really see the value here at wide receiver, even though I might want to go with one of them because I have a lot of picks until my next pick and it'll probably drop down to like here. And I don't really want to bank on one of these guys. So I'm going to choose between hmm, Goodwin or Aguilar, the two guys I'm looking at right now. Hmm. I'm going to go with Goodwin. I've really been rising on him a lot. And I talked about it in my, uh, in my wild sat Wednesday video two days ago, if you didn't watch that, Goodwin had as many targets inside the 10 yard line as um, Gronk, Marvin Jones, Alshon Jeffrey, AJ Green last year. So he was used down there. My other thing is they don't really have any goal. They don't have any touchdown weapons. Um, so Goodwin could be a part of that, that piece. And I think he's a better wide receiver than people are giving him credit for. And you know, I am, I'm so far off of Pierre Garcon. I have no interest in taking Pierre Garcon. So I think Goodwin emerges as a wide receiver one there. So I kind of like Goodwin, but I also really like Aguilar because he had a really good year too. He really busted out. And it was because they tried playing him on the outside, right? I just came across this stat yesterday. Aguilar played 80% of his routes or he ran 80% of his routes on the outside in his first two years. And he really struggled that way. And that makes sense because coming out of coming out of college, he projected to be a slot receiver, right? He's a, kind of a smaller, quicker guy. Um, and he's good at finding the zones. And last year he ran 86% of his routes from the slot. I, I can't remember if it was 86 from the outside and then 80 slot or vice versa, but they switched him to a complete slot receiver, and that's obviously when he broke out. So they're going to know to use him again here this year. And I think with Alshon Jeffrey recovering from rotator cuff surgery, he might get off to a slow start. He might even—I don't even know if he's going to be back for preseason. Whatever. Um, Aguilar could be a focal point of this offense to start the year. So I kind of like—I'm going to go with Aguilar here actually as my wide receiver too. I think he gives you a safe floor there. Wow, that's crazy. Both of those running backs stayed on the board. So good call by me going with wide receivers because those dropped off pretty quickly, as well as the tight ends and as well as the quarterbacks. Um, so I want I want a mm, – this is tough now because Andrew Luck is still on the board, and I'm sure I, – I think he's going to be healthy this year. Uh, but there's still on Johnson and Jamal Williams there. Um, Tight end is going to fall off quickly. So I think what I'm going to do is, since quarterback is so deep, I'm still going to wait on quarterback. And this is what I would normally do in any any size league, pretty much. Um, but I will end up snagging two quarterbacks. I'll probably go with a running back and a tight end here. Um, now, my strategy with tight end in these deeper leagues is definitely going to be, especially if I wait on it and if I don't get one of the top tight ends, which obviously I'm not getting anymore because we just saw Kittle, Trey Burton, Jordan Reed, Kyle Rudolph go off the board. I would be trying to grab two of them. I have my eye on OJ Howard as a guy that I'm, uh, um, I'm getting more and more in tune with, and I'm liking a little bit more and more. I was reading Evan Silva's uh, team preview for the Bucks yesterday, and look at this paragraph he wrote on OJ Howard. So OJ Howard played much more of a combination tight end role as a rookie, blocking on 60% of his snaps and drawing only 19% of his targets in the slot. Howard earned spikes in playing time and routes run as the season progressed, 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 however, and was wildly efficient over his final nine games with a 21, 325, five receiving line on just 27 targets in week seven through 15. Howard missed weeks 16 and 17 with an ankle injury, but was fully recovered by OTAs. So in those last uh, seven weeks, he absolutely, or his final nine games, he scored five touchdowns, which is absolutely crucial for a tight end position because tight end, touchdowns are where you separate yourself. Um, among 43 qualified tight ends, only Gronk, Hunter Henry, Travis Kelsey, and Zach Ertz average more yards per route run than Howard's 1.85 clip. And yards per route run is a huge metric that Pro Football Focus always focuses on because it's actually a predictive statistic. It's one of those where you could look back and predict how successful a, a receiver or a tight end is going to be because yards per route run is pretty sticky year over year. So to see him up there behind those top guys is very, very, uh, is crucial. Um, although a major jump in target volume is difficult to forecast, Howard's ceiling is outrageous if he can carve out more passing game work. So I'd agree with that. Uh, Howard is one of those prospects that came out and was like tantalizing. Everyone wanted to see him do well, but they do have Cameron Braith there. Now, guys, I will say that big deal that they gave Cameron Braith, they gave him a $41 million extension this summer. That's, there's almost nothing like guaranteed there. He has, he gets $7 million guaranteed this year, but they can cut him next season with no cap penalty. So that's not really a $41 million contract for Brady. So um, 
I think they're realizing that Howard is probably their guy there. They, they I guess they want Bray around for one more year, but if something were to happen to Bray or if Howard just progressively gets more playing time, which could be the case because guys, tight ends progress very slowly in the NFL. It's because they have to learn the entire route tree, right? He's a fast guy, so he's learning routes from the slot. He's learning routes from the tight end position. He's got to learn all the routes, hot routes, but he's also got to learn all the blocking assignments. That's tough for a tight end to do in just one year. That's why rookie tight ends take forever to develop. Um, so... OJ Howard would be the guy that I have my eye on. Uh, David Njoku, I guess, gets a little bump with Corey Coleman out of there, but I still think they're just going to fit Callaway right into that slot, and it's not going to be a big deal. And then you'd have to look at, like, another tight end for sure behind um, OJ Howard because you're probably not that comfortable starting him at tight end. But I would like Jack Doyle as my tight end. I know Eric Ebron's there, but I have Jack Doyle, infinite greater signs, Eric Ebron with Andrew Luck back. So do you go Luck? Do you go carry on Johnson? Do you go – I'm not going to go the wide receiver here. Um, or do you go with a tight end? So what I'd be looking at is what's more likely to happen? Am I going to miss out on Carrion Johnson or am I going to miss out on OJ Howard? Now, what I would do is probably look at the teams that are after me. Um, I don't even know if I could see this. I guess because, yeah, because that'd be 13th there. So I'd look at these teams and see. Okay, so neither of those teams have, neither of those teams have a tight end. So there's a good chance the tight ends start going off the board kind of quickly here. That's interesting. Um, so it's probably better for me to go with a tight end here because I definitely want either Doyle or OJ Howard. Um, and I'd be okay if I miss out on Carrion Johnson because I could always get Jamal Williams. So we're going to go OJ Howard here over Carrion Johnson. Hopefully it works out. Yep, there goes the tight ends. And boom, let's go. So, Carrion Johnson ended up falling again because um, now you can go Carrion Johnson, you can go Jamal Williams. And this is this is personal up to you. The reason I'm going to go Carrion Johnson here is because Karen Johnson is more likely to explode over the second half of the year. Jamal Williams is more likely to have a very big impact over the first half of the year, obviously, because he's going to be starting those first two games. When I look at my roster, I already have four running backs, right? I already have these four guys who are going to give me production immediately. So I don't need someone who's going to give me production in the flex spot or in a starting running back spot right now, which would be Jamal Williams. So I am okay putting Carrion Johnson on my bench and letting him hopefully win that role and earn that role over course of time. You know what I mean? And then eventually, once he gets more playing time, he can work his way into my flex spot. So that's why I go Carrion Johnson because I don't need immediate production. So we'll go with Carrion. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, man. Fuck, I was hoping Anthony Miller fell to me. All right, so we're in the ninth round, guys, and this is why you wait on quarterbacks. This is why you wait on quarterbacks. Ugh. And this is why you go with running backs often and early because now if you went, like, wide receiver early and you didn't get with running backs, like, look who you have left to pick from. But you still have some decent wide receivers. Um, if you believe in Chris Godwin, like I do, if, you, if you're a Michael Gallup guy, I think all these guys have pretty – a lot of upside here still left at wide receiver, but not so much at running back, although I do like Jordan Wilkins a lot. But look at quarterback. I'd be perfectly fine with Matt Ryan as my quarterback in a 16-team league. Plus, I can pair him in the next round. I'll go with Matt Ryan here just to grab him quickly. Boom. Perfectly fine with that. And then I'd probably go with another quarterback, to be honest with you, because if you're going to wait, right, you don't want to have to ever stream, like look on the waiver wire, because that's going to be very hard to come by in 16-team leagues. So although we go with the skill positions early and often, the running backs, the wide receivers, you want to make sure you have depth at the other spots, because if something happens to a Matt Ryan or an OJ Howard, or they don't end up playing well, then you don't want to have to look on the uh, on the wire to depend on that. So I'm going to go with Matt Ryan, who I think is a safe play. And mm, this is tough. I can either go Mariota or Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes is obviously the upside play, the high, you know, the shiny new toy. Um, and Mariota's got the new, the new coach, um, in Matt LaFleur, and this is going to be hopefully a more high-powered offense. So it's a tough decision. I think these guys are very close for me in my rankings. And um, hmm. I'll go with Pat Mahomes just for the fudge of it. I don't think I own any Pat Mahomes anywhere, to be honest with you. But they have such a brutal schedule to start off the season. So um, hopefully Matt Ryan can kind of do his thing for a while, and I won't have to worry about that. Okay, so we saw a lot of tight ends just go off the board. There was a string. And this is also what happens in, in a 16-team league, guys. If you are at, like, the front or back ends of a draft, which I kind of am, I guess, at the 13th pick, there will be positional runs, right? So you have to plan that out accordingly. 
Um, if you get hit, like if you wait on quarterback and say, I didn't go with like Matt Ryan there, I guess it worked out because no one took a quarter. That's kind of ridiculous. Not a single quarterback went off the board after this, but if, if you didn't take quarterback there, there's a good chance that within the next, like, look how many picks went in between mine, like 26, that there's a run of a certain position. You're going to miss out on that. And there goes like three tiers at the position that go really quickly. So, um, I could have waited, honestly, Dan, I guess I could have got a, uh, Geronimo Allison or, or Jordan Wilkins, and then uh, and then went with Marcus Mariota. But I don't think you could take that chance, thinking that no quarterback is going to go off the board there. So I'm all right with that. Um, we don't really have any wide receivers, so I probably have to go with a wide receiver, and I probably have to go with a tight end here because I want a backup tight end to OJ Howard. Um, and I would go with Chris Godwin. I like Chris Godwin a lot here. We're getting all the reports of John Ross being the wide receiver too. There, they let go of Brandon LaFell, the veteran, which obviously tells you that they think John Ross is ready to go. They said in the practices and the scrimmages, John Ross has been lining up as a wide receiver too there. No questions asked. And uh, he's a guy that I've been telling people, like people ask a lot of questions about John Ross on my live streams. And I always try to tell them, I'm like, listen, John Ross is a much better player than just like the speed guy. He was a top 10 pick in fantasy drafts last year. He ran a really uh, fast 40, but he's also a very, very good route runner. Coming out of college, he was more than just a small speedster. Um, and Matt Harmon's reception perception showed that as well. Coming out of college, he's a very good route runner. And he's more of like a John Brown, uh, a playmaker, but he has good routes in him than he is just a, a long speedster. So I like John Ross a lot, but I like the upside of Chris Godwin a lot. Um, I actually love Chris Godwin here. So I'll go with Chris Godwin, and then I'll probably grab another tight end after this. Cool. Um, so that's interesting. All three of my breakout tight ends were on this list still. So we have Ricky Seals-Jones, Benjamin Watson, Vance McDonald. Now, Ricky Seals-Jones would be my pick here. However, we don't have any news. Up I don't think we have any updated news on on the arrest kind of thing that happened to him was arrested and charged. Who knows if anything will come of it. He might be subjected to a minor suspension. If he gets suspended, I'm not going to want to take him obviously. Um, but at the same time, he's not my starting tight end. So you can kind of wait on that, which is fine by me. Um, so I guess I will go with Ricky Seals Jones here because even if he suspended one or two games, he's not my starting tight end. And you got to remember guys, you should like, Guys who are suspended over the first couple of weeks of the season, remember, you have no bye weeks and you have no injuries on your team yet. So that's that's l legitimately the best time for a player to be suspended. Like Zeke put people in a, a tough spot last year because he was suspended in the middle of the year. And um, and that's when bye weeks start happening. That's when injuries are already occurring. So he put, he put you in a really tough spot. But the guys that are suspended uh, for the first portion of the game, like the Jameis Winston and the Julian Edelmans and possibly the Ricky Seals Joneses, you're in a better position because you don't like the, the bench spots don't need to be used as much because there isn't any buys and there are injured players. But at the same time, that doesn't mean I value Julian Edelman much higher because I'm just not that high on him in particular. Um, so it goes back to like subjectiveness, like how high do you have the player anyways? You know what I mean? So, um, so Ricky Seals Jones, Chris Godwin. Um, oh my God. Do we really have all these slots? I thought we did 17 rounds. We might have won too many rounds, but I don't really remember how many rounds I put this at. So I have two quarterbacks. I have the two tight ends now. Um, and I need wide receiver depth, obviously, because I went with a lot of running backs and I went with a lot of running backs early. So I'd probably just be uh, scooping up high upside late wide receivers. And John Ross, I think, fits that bill perfectly. Where are we going? Finally saw Marcus Mariota. And that's the thing, guys. 14th round in a 16-team league. What is that? Like pick... I'm not good at math, but I believe I'm actually very good at math. So almost over pick 200 where Mariota just went off. Um, so there goes. Um, oh, so I'm looking at wide receivers. Yeah. And the other thing too is in these deeper leagues, I know a lot of people don't like handcuffs, but if you do with, go with a risky running back in the beginning, like if you end up going with Fournette or if you end up going with one of the hot, like, I don't know, even one of the elite running backs, you can always handcuff them because normally you don't want to handcuff players in like a 10 team league because the players that are left at the end of the draft are still good players. But when you're getting down to the 14th, 15th, 16th round in a 16 team league, it's super shallow and getting your handcuffs are per I'm perfectly fine with that. Because if, you, if for, for instance, you take a running back with your first round pick, he gets hurt and someone else has his handcuff. Like that's, that's an enormous swing of power for teams. But if you have the handcuff, you know, then you kind of protect yourself. So we have the wide receivers there. Let's see. I don't like any of these running backs. They're all pretty much handcuffs, but I still see guys that I think could potentially have big roles in their offenses, like John Brown, 
Uh, I like Taewon Taylor. I like Dante Pettis a lot. I even kind of like James Washington, even though I'm very high on Juju Smith-Schuster. And, ooh, Dak is still on the board, too. I might even go with a third quarterback, to be honest with you. I'm probably not going to, but... Yeah, I'll go with uh, I'll go with Dante Pettis. All the reports are coming out really, really high. Now I, ha- I actually have two 49ers wide receivers, which is kind of ironic because I don't really like Jimmy G that much. Um, <laughs> what defenses we got left? Ooh, there's not a lot of defenses left. So what I would do with defenses is I probably would have actually taken one there to be honest with you had uh, had I realized that people were taking them so early. Defenses, kickers, no. So defenses, I like especially in a deeper league, I would look at the schedules. So you have these guys, right? You have the defenses. A couple of them are still good defenses, like the Steelers. The Steelers are actually not very good without Ryan Shazier. They're letting up a shitload of points. I think the Bears will low-key be pretty damn good this year on defense. Um, I'm going to look at their schedule real quick. Because what I do is, because I stream defenses, but that's tough to do in 16-team leagues, obviously. I would be looking at who they're playing the first couple weeks. And seeing if they're good matchups. Like, if you draft, for instance, like, okay. So you draft the Bears, right? And their first game is against the Packers at Lambeau. Like, are you going to feel comfortable starting them? Definitely not. So you probably don't want to draft them, right? Because you're going to draft them and be like, okay, cool, I got the Bears. And be like, oh, shit, I can't really play them in week one because they're at Aaron Rodgers, you know? Um, So I look at the other teams and kind of just look and and see who has uh, a good schedule for the week one. The Chiefs are on there. Who do they play week one? They're at the Chargers. Don't really love that. Where are we at, though? Cardinals. I don't love their defense either, but let's see. Okay, so they're at home against the Redskins. I don't hate that matchup. What I'd also do is I'd look at, like, Vegas odds. This is the website I use for Vegas odds. And the three things I look at for defenses for fantasy is, one, a low over-under. So the projected total points scored in the game is going to be low. I look at favorites, and I look at, um, yeah, like who's going to win the game, who's got a bigger point spread, and being the home team. So those are kind of my three criteria. So I look at the Cardinals game. Where do we see it? See, I'm playing chestnut checkers over here. So the, oh, wow, the over-under is so low in this game. 36 points? Wait, why are all the over-unders so damn low? This has got to be a mistake. Oh, this is preseason. I was like, what? Cardinals. Where's week one? It's preseason. Gotcha. Okay, so 44 is about average. It's a pick them. They're at home, so that's not great odds. Uh, but this is kind of my process that I'd go through with defenses. It's You want a home team, you want a favorite, and you want a low-scoring um, low scoring affair. So I just look and see who's got... So the Packers are heavy favorites against the Bears week one. Pretty high over under. The Lions are heavy favorites against the Jets. The Patriots have already been picked. The Saints. So I like the Saints and I like, uh, where is it? Is the Ravens on here? And I like the Ravens as my first week one picks because they're home and the Saints play the Jameis Winston list Bucks and the Bear, uh, the Ravens play the Bills. So those teams are both definitely off the board already. Um, but what team was just on the board that? So the Packers are heavy favorites against the Chicago Bears week one at home. So I'd be cool taking the Packers here. Um, but I could probably wait on them, so I'm not going to take them right now. And uh, they should be improved. They use their first two picks on cornerbacks. Both of them are kind of studs, so I'm excited to see them. And uh, what else do we got? Yeah, so I'm not – wait, so we're in the sixth, 15th round. I don't know how many rounds I put this to. I thought I put it to 17, but I could be wrong. I'm going to go with Taylor Taylor. He's a personal, a personal fave of mine. Where are we going? Nip along the way. <laughs> so go with the pack. Might be against the green. A lot of people will be like, what? But I'm telling you, that's the research you got to do for, for defenses, Briz. Big Briz. Big, big Briz. So I'm going to act as this. this is the last round because I should have only made it 17 rounds, and it might be. So I would go with a kicker here. And kickers, guys, I just take a good uh, someone in a good offense in a high-scoring team. Um, except not on the Pittsburgh Steelers because they go for two points way too much. So go Kaskowski here. Okay, so this is going to keep going, but I'm going to cut it off here because it's supposed to be 17 rounds. Um, but yeah, this is the uh, this is the basic gist of it, guys. I still wait on quarterback. I still wait on tight end, but I do want to I, w- I want to double down on the depth of those positions. But stock up on on receivers. I think th- this team's pretty pretty goddamn good for a 16 team league. Uh, Freeman, Alex Collins, Adams, Aguilar, and then my flex spots, Royce Freeman and Rex Burkhead. I'm not mad about that. 
high upside plays in carry on Johnson and Chris Godwin on the bench. Um, and then quarterback backups are Patrick Mahomes, Ricky Seals, Jones. I might have even gone with a third tight end, to be honest with you, rather than Taewon Taylor there. And it could have been, who could I have taken? Uh, eh, actually, there was really no one left, but you get the point. Um, depth depth is, if you, if you go really heavy on running backs and wide receivers throughout your draft, then you can give yourself a little bit of depth on um, uh, on those other positions. But that's, that's kind of my strategy when it comes to 16-team leagues. I hope this helped. Some of you guys out there that are in the deeper leagues, uh, and if it did, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new. We'll be back. Actually, I'm, I'm putting out a video for you tomorrow, which is the Dr. Jesse Morse interview. And then Sunday, I'll be on my way back from Mexico, uh, so I'm not sure if I'll be alive or not to do the live stream. Monday will be in the month. Monday, as always, Julio Jones versus Michael Thomas. And then Tuesday will be the long-awaited video with... Andy Holloway of the Fantasy Footballers. You guys are going to absolutely, I think you guys are going to love that one. We actually don't talk any player analysis. We don't even talk, we don't talk fantasy football numbers or nothing like that. Just good, just good life talk, man. It was a really good interview, about an hour and 20 minutes long. You guys will really enjoy that. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this one. Again, thumbs up if you did. Rating and review if you're on the pod. Kisses! And I'll see y'all in the next bitter. Peace.